So let's give someone a very quick capsule bio of yours. You were born in Turkey. Uh, you were an economics professor at MIT. Um, how would you describe your research uh, and the work that you do? Well, you know, I came into economics because I was passionate about understanding democracy and economic prosperity. Little did I know when I first came into economics that you know, many of these topics were not the ones that economists focused on, you know, when I first arrived <laughs> in the 1990s. You know, we studied markets and supply and demand, but, you know, big questions about democracy and so on were off the table. But as soon as I started exploring these issues, it was quite obvious to me that technological change and innovation were also at the heart of the problem. And so a lot of my research is about what triggers technological progress, big innovation breakthroughs, and what their consequences are, what their inequality implications are, who wins, who loses. And uh, a lot of that was academic work, and then it started being more amenable to public discourse because inequality became a major issue in this country and technological change is around us. And I think debates about what technology is doing to our society are becoming more central. So the Power and Progress book is the culmination of all of this research and thinking. Yeah, so uh, your latest book, Power and Progress, makes an argument uh, that's similar to, frankly, an argument I made when I was running for president in the last cycle. Um, now, now, there's this very, very big fissure uh, or divide one one has uh, when you think about technological progress and its effect on human prosperity. So the main one is, hey, every time something gets invented, we become more prosperous. It's great. And even if it's not you directly, it's going to be one of these rising tide lifts all boats scenarios. So we should all cheerlead for progress. Now, the other side of the coin is, hey, when these technologies get adopted, they kick certain people to the curb. They make certain people richer, certain firms uh, more central and, and powerful. Right now, the main technology people think of, and this is AI, um, and AI is going to benefit a certain number of the very large tech firms uh, and their, their shareholders, presumably. And then there may be lots of workers who are on the outside looking in. So your book makes a very, very important and I will say comprehensive historically documented argument about which of these two we should be looking at. Uh, and you say, look, it's, it doesn't happen on its own. It's actually uh, a result of a lot of social, economic, and political choices. So if you were to sum up for people, does technology mean that we all get richer and more prosperous? Well, your, your, your description and your emphasis are 100% on target. Yes, indeed, this is very coherent, uh, consistent with your emphasis. And the way I put it when discussing this issue is that you have to have two potentially conflicting frames in your mind. One is, no doubt, we are amazingly fortunate to be living today rather than, say, 300 years ago. And that's largely because of industrial technologies and scientific breakthroughs that have then been applied to our lives. So we are beneficiaries of technological progress. We are so much more healthier, so much more comfortable, so much more prosperous, so much more secure than people 300, 250 years ago. But conflicting with that, there is nothing automatic about technological progress bringing these gains. During almost every episode of major technological transitions, what we see is that A, there are many losers from that process, as you pointed out, but even more importantly, B, the phase of widespread gains did not arise by itself or automatically. It was almost always a struggle to get there. So sometimes when we talk about these issues, and I'm sure you got this a lot, Andrew, as well, you get the question, so you are, are you saying that this time is different because we've always benefited from technology in the past, so you must be saying this time is different. And this book is saying, no, this time is no different. In the past, too, we've had these struggles. We've had many people who've been damaged by technology when it wasn't appropriately used. For example, the Industrial Revolution, to which we owe our prosperity, led to lower incomes, much harsher working conditions, much lower life expectancy for about 100 years for the working people. 
Yeah, and, and that's what your book painstakingly does, is it goes out through history and says, okay, when there was a great leap forward technologically, uh, did everyone feel the benefits? Exactly. <laughs> and, and, so, and so you um, you go through major examples, and uh, the answer is a lot of the times people did not feel the benefits, starting with uh, the development of even uh, agriculture and and farming uh, in Europe, uh, where it turns out that there were some landowners and then a bunch of serfs. <laughs> I mean, you know, and again, you know, how can you expect that things would be so seamless when almost all land, almost all technology, almost all power was so concentrated? And it wasn't. You know, another example, even closer to home, is the cotton gin. The United States became the largest exporter of cotton, and the southern economy was completely revolutionized by the ability to plant uh, cotton that could then be cleaned ma on a massive scale. But who were the producers? Were they were the enslaved black people? Did they benefit? Hell no. Their conditions became much harsher on cotton plantations, longer working hours. They were moved to the uh, further deep south. And, of course, again, you don't expect their conditions to improve seamlessly because they were in an enslaved relationship. So power matters. What we're doing with technology matters. AI is so amazing because it's so versatile. So that makes these issues more important, not less. Hey, YouTube, glad you're enjoying the podcast. If you really like it, hit subscribe, and then YouTube will notify you every time we have a bang up new guest. Thank you.